hello virtual doll convention so we are here in north carolina live with bradley justice yarbrough oh. and we are so excited for our next program it's going to be different from anything that you've ever seen or heard from bradley and i cannot wait so i'm going to get behind the camera and we're going to get in up close to all these wonderful things bradley brought for us today bradley thank you for being here thank you for having me rachel i'm very excited to talk about um um, what I'm going to talk about yeah. it's, it's um, one of the things I always tell everyone is we always take for granted that that dolls just sort of like happen that we just kind of think that it's you know one day there's a doll on the toy shelf but there's a lot of artistry and a lot of artists that go behind every doll that's ever produced someone had to come up with the idea and sketch it and someone had to sculpt it and um, make a mold and so I'm going to talk about a couple of people that have a lot to do with the things I love, Mattel dolls and Barbie. So we're going to start with Martha Armstrong Hand. Now if you don't know Martha Armstrong Hand, she was born in 1920. She's originally from Germany. She is a ne was a Niata artist and she sculpted a lot of my childhood so I feel like I owe her a little bit yeah. of my youth and one of my childhood dolls that I played with was the Sunshine Family. Now the Sunshine Family originally started off as being called the Good Earth Family and it was a concept that Martha Armstrong Hand had done where it was going to be a family, um, a mom, a dad and a baby kind of living in nature and so I brought in from my archives the original wax sculpts of the Sunshine Family. This is the mom and the dad. These are done in, in wax. These would have been prototypes. Now you originally they're sculpted in clay and then they make a mold and they pour it in wax and then the wax can be more easily refined to get all the detail they need. Now they're very similar to the production models but they're also very different. They are not as articulated and and that sort of thing but we also have some sample sculpts of the dad. You would have seen he'd oh, had slightly different faces. Um, different hair colors and eye colors and that sort of thing so you can kind of see how it sort of happens and kind of comes to be This is so cool that you have this Bradley. Yeah, it's just kind of luck that I I happened upon them um, it, Yeah, I, I'm very I'm very excited to have honestly what I kind of consider the ground zero for what would eventually become Toys that I played with Absolutely. so that is so neat pretty amazing Martha Armstrong Hand was very influential to a lot of artists. A lot of artists credit her with really giving them great advice, great critique that was helpful, mm -hmm. and she really kind of pioneered the way that um, dolls were created. She really paid attention to the articulation and a very human aspect of how the dolls Look, she worked for Mattel after she had worked for the Viewmaster company, Gaff, which um, produced those Viewmaster reels that we looked at. She did like Bambi and some of the Disney characters and, uh, you know, just yeah. a lot. So she really had an eye for design and sculpture. She was, she was a trained sculptor. She went to school in Berlin and then went to school in, at UCLA for um, 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 illustration. So she was... Oh, she's she really had a ground, yeah, so she sculpted with um, Mattel, she created Baby First Step and Cheerful Tearful and um, a lot of things. So, so many things. I'm just going to real quick focus on, th this is by Helen Kish, everybody. This is one of her uh, wonderful fairies and Helen Kish uh, was very influenced and is influenced by the work of Martha Armstrong Hand. So that's what's dangling right here. You see it in the background. We had <laughs> so to yeah, we, Helen and I had yes. a nice conversation about Martha. Um, but before the Sunshine Family came to the fruition that we did, Martha had decided that they were going to be a larger family and not only were they going to be a family of a long time ago, they were going to kind of be time travelers. So I was lucky enough to find, this is what they were originally conceived to look like. This is the Whoa. mom and dad and baby. And um, That's totally different. So they were going to do, these are some of the storyboards they did. They were going to be a primitive transformation. So these are um, illustrations that were created showing how that they would do. And there's also a baby, a sister and a brother that came along with this side. Look at that. Oh, that is so, so interesting to see. There was gonna be a, what she called the brand new world transformation, which was gonna be futuristic. Amazing. And um, this is the Renaissance. And they were gonna work with some of the accessories and create, you know, 
um, animals and accessories that were, you know, just part of this. So it would have been really neat to kind of see if this had really happened. I love my childhood version, but these are really kind of cool. Yeah. So it's neat to see sometimes the prototypes and the concepts that were presented that didn't happen. Um, but um, I just think this is very charming. So um, they did eventually kind of do some time traveling with the Sunshine family. They used the dolls to create sort of like um, historical dolls, keeping in mind Sunshine Family originally premiered in, the, in 1973. So over the course of history, the United States celebrated its bicentennial. So everyone was very much into um, historical. Mm -hmm. um, so they did um, versions of these dolls that were for the line that were just sort of, you know, sort of time. They were not as, as in detail. I don't think they ever created this one. I do know they created this one. So it's so fun just to step back in time and see these concepts. Yes. Even though they didn't come to fruition, it's just wonderful to see the concepts and the imagination that that was uh, used exactly. for these. Exactly. So now I'm going to see, tell you how Martha Armstrong Hand relates to Barbie. Um, she created a few sculpts for the Barbie line, one of which was Ricky, um, Skipper's friend. And then the other one in 1971, she sculpted a head called Steffi. And so the first Steffi that was produced was called Walk Lively Steffi. And this is her. Love the, her. the face that was sculpted by Martha is, was such a unique and versatile face. It has um, sort of wonderful shaped nose and wonderful shaped mouth. It's, you know, was just really a great face and it suddenly became that it was very versatile um it would then go on to be utilized for the hispanic barbie it's a very the the lips are very kind of pouty it's a it's a i love this the, the ethnic features um are amazing she did a great job and then barbie's friend pj also with lavender eyes fantastic the lips are all the same. Yes. The face, the, the head mold is the exact same head mold, but just with okay, a little bit of different, different painting. Makeup. Yeah, it just looks different. This is the Parisian Barbie wearing one of my favorite outfits, which was a European oh, that's outfit. Um, and then they utilized it when Kitty Black Perkins designed the first Barbie that was, the first black Barbie that was named Barbie um, was designed by Kitty Black Perkins. And she's one of my favorite designers. and. Um, this is the same face mold, yet it utilizes the Steffi face, and I it's think it perfect. works. Oh, it works. That's a fabulous doll. And Love then, her outfit. Oh, isn't it great? And this was one of... The, Kitty was famous for, like, a transformation kind of thing. So, um, the thing that's really cool about this outfit is now she's ready for poolside. She's got her wonderful sort of, like, um, fabulous bathing suit for underneath her... Oh, it's a, it's a poolside outfit. Yeah, oh, so I thought she was, she was like going to a gala. That's, well, she, she can she be. Could. I mean, it was uh, Kitty created a lot of play wear and uh, play value in all of her dolls. So, and then this is one of my favorite dolls. This is Dream Day PJ that was, oh, look um, at that. got the fabulous Steffi face as well. So, and now is this 1980s? This is like 1983. Oh, it's, it's it's so 80s and it's so fabulous. I love it. Oh, it's completely fabulous. But it's just a wonderful sort of yeah um, use of the, the same face. So um, they still use the Steffi face mold today. So Martha Armstrong Hand is still yeah. alive and well, at least in the Barbie world. So, But they've used it for Barbie and um, Barbie's friends. It's just and used around the world. So Amazing. <clears throat> so she's got um, Martha Armstrong hand really does have an incredible body of work. She is her, it's just it's isn't amazing. It amazing. It's amazing. And she worked for Mattel in the early 60s and then she went sort of freelance. Then yeah. she came back in the early 70s. Um, she kind of traded off with the next sculptor I'm going to talk about, which is Joyce Christopher. Now, when Martha left Mattel and went freelance in 67, they hired a new sculptor who was named Joyce Christopher. And I've had the pleasure of going through Joyce Christopher's archives and kind of discovering her body of work. And through that, I discovered another piece of um, history that worked into my childhood, which was Stacy. One of her first contributions to the Barbie line was to create some friends, and one of the first ones was Stacy. And this so is 
My Childhood yes, Stacey okay, doll. Okay, that's what I was going to ask yeah, because so. I think there's a misconception that it's all Barbie for you, but you love Stacy. Sta- you know, yeah. Stacy, you know, when I got Stacy, I didn't know the difference between Stacy and Barbie. I just thought it was Barbie. So uh, I bonded with the red, wonderful red hair, and she kind of has this face that's sort of. Yeah. Um, it's just very sort friendly, of, yeah. It's sort of like Ginger from Gilligan's Island or yes. something, but she was a fun doll, and I played with her like crazy. But the face was sculpted by Joyce Christopher, and she um, was hired by Mattel in 67, replacing um, Martha Armstrong Hand. Now, there were a lot of sculptors that did work at Mattel, um, but Joyce's body of work is almost as exemplary as Martha's. She would also update the Ken doll. This is Walk Lively Ken, but this new style of face and body was sculpted by Joyce Christopher. Amazing. How, so when did they, when did she make the Walk Lively Ken? Um, she sculpted him um, in around, he premiered again, I think in 68. Wow. So um, he... Um, Barbie's had a lot of transformations over the years, but Ken hasn't had so many. No, he hasn't. He, they used this head from when it was sculpted in 68 to about 77 when they redid and, and someone else sculpted the new Superstar Ken. But um, as Mattel's did, a lot of people, all of their sculptors might have submitted a new look for Ken and then they selected hers. But Joyce Christopher was uh, amazing. This is also the same Stacy face mold except... Um, and the talking version, and she has the side ponytail and a different color hair. I love it. Now, I'm going to give Barbie collectors a little bit of crazy trivia. We all say that vintage Barbie was made in Japan and until the early 70s when they moved to some other countries. But um, this is a talking Stacy from 1968. Um, can you look at that wrist tag? Where does it say it, it was made? It says made in the USA. Isn't that crazy? But it says Barbie's, oh, Barbie's British friend. Yeah, made in the USA. And on the side it says Stacy. Love um, it. So Love seeing that tag. It was, it was really cool to see that tag. But what's really interesting is all the talking dolls and the early dolls are marked on their like right butt cheek. This doll has absolutely no markings, so it's kind of crazy. No markings at all? No markings at all. So then if somebody found it, they might think it was a copy or something. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So wow. it's really neat to kind of make those sort of discoveries. For sure. So, so what I've discovered also, going through Joyce Christopher's work and Martha Armstrong Hand's work, is there are lists that they've created of what they worked on with Mattel. And what's interesting is some of them take credit for the same body of work. And what I've discovered is sometimes someone would start a project, but mm. someone else would finish it. Or someone would create a project, but then someone would be charged with changing it to make it different. So Martha Armstrong Hand sculpted some dolls called Rosebud Doll, which were these like seven inch plastic sort of baby dolls that had these Victorian carriages and stuff like that. Those dolls would eventually be shrunk down and sort of retooled by Joyce Christopher for a smaller version of the doll. Now, this is the smaller version of the Rosebud doll. Oh, this would go sweet. on to be some little friends um, for for Barbie and um, the Hart family and that sort of thing. But this is a prototype set. This is the original doll in pieces, um, but it's sculpted in wax. So you can kind of see what it originally looked like with the whole prototype wardrobe of clothes that would have been created for the doll. And then these are like some, what they call first pulls from the vinyl to show what the head would look like. Bradley, this is amazing that you have all these prototypes. This is so cool. It's like one of my favorite things. Um, to me, it's the zenith of the beginning yes. of everything. I I love the concept and it's just very fascinating. And it's yeah. very hard to find this kind of stuff. Um, I was very lucky to work with a couple of former designers, some people that had worked at Mattel um, to get some of the stuff. Some of it I paid very dearly for. Um, some of it I was lucky enough to find on eBay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a great place. And it's it's great to preserve this and to document as much about it because there are a lot of unscrupulous people who throw something out there and say, oh, this is a prototype when it's the furthest thing from that. So right. you see all the little samples and like the numbers that would have been written on it for this is like the look number four. And this was like a little... Oh, look at that. But you get to so see sweet. some of the same materials that were used in other versions of Mattel product and that sort of thing. So similar fabrics. And it's amazing. Such a treat for us to see this so up close too. I just love it. How awesome. How awesome.
Bradley, when you when you started your your um, research for this um, for this subject and for the convention, did you discover new things, things you didn't know before? I, I'm always kind of discovering new things, and usually once when I think I've figured something out, mm -hmm. something else will turn up that either dispels what I've learned or challenges it, and sometimes affirms it. So it's real interesting to kind of know um, the person and who is really behind some of these creations, knowing that um, some of these artists created something decades ago and you can still go to the toy store and find that on the yeah. shelf. I just think it's really amazing. It's really um, incredible. And I just love that that it's it's still it's still famous. It's still, yeah. I, it, you know, that little piece of them, that little bit of work still still continues. It, it has a life. It does have a life. And Bradley, we have been talking about artists from the past. What, what's an artist that is um, currently working that is inspirational to you in their work? Well, I, <laughs> I love <laughs> Helen. Helen Kish. Well, Helen, you know, has also, you know, helped me with some of my research because I talked to Helen about Joyce Christopher and about Martha Armstrong Hand. And then Helen has also worked with a lot of um, artists and been an inspiration for them. But I love Helen's work mm -hmm. and I love Helen. But she's really great. Yeah. Um, but, um, I agree. I, There's yeah. her, the wonderful fairy up here. It is just such, it is so special. I think um, a lot of artists hide behind their work and we don't get to hear about the artists. And also with Mattel, um, the people that were sculpting and the people who were working were regarded secret. Mm -hmm. um, they, they never advertised that, you know, the Steffi was, was sculpted by Martha Armstrong Hannah. It was after she left the company that she shared that information and shared what she had worked on with Mattel. So a lot of this, for me as a researcher, you know, I'm going back and trying to put names with outfits and names with dolls to preserve that for future. I love, you know, documenting this sort of stuff. So it's um, it's important that if you know, like a piece of that information, that you make sure it's yeah. shared somewhere so we know who worked on some stuff and um, put, a, put a name with the face, so to speak. Well, and absolutely. And all of the conventioneers uh, so appreciate all of the hard work you've done and the amount of knowledge that you share and the fact that we can put it on videos now and, and just share it because sharing it. It, it's, it's, we don't want all of this stuff to be a secret, right? No, it has to be, yeah. you know, preserving it means, you know, right. you know, sharing that, that story, sharing that knowledge and keeping it, keep moving it forward. Exactly. Well, in, we are moving forward. This was amazing. Bradley, thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel, for bye. giving me the chance to share. Yes. Bye, bye. convention. Bye, bye. We'll be back soon.